Now, today we'll be talking about chapter 9, section 3. And the title of this is Expansion into Texas. As we talk about America's expansion, which really this section is all about manifest destiny and American growth, much of the land had already been claimed. Of course, we talked a couple of days ago about how we interacted with the Native Americans when we came upon land that had already been claimed by them. Generally, we went to war with them or we made treaties where the Native Americans ceded or gave their land as they were forced to evacuate and move to other places so that we could settle these territories. Now, if we're willing to fight and kill for more territory, what do we do when a European nation has already claimed territory? Now, of course, formerly Spain owned much of what is today the United States. They laid claim to the Louisiana Territory. They laid claim to Florida. They laid claim to the entire southwestern United States. But eventually, Mexico would declare its independence from Spain, which we'll get to in just a moment. And now, as the United States is moving forward in the mid-1800s, what are we going to do when another nation already claims this territory that we desire? So expansion, coming into conflict with Mexico, it's going to be the theme of the next two days, but also the political issues of slavery and the expansion of slavery. In fact, the expansion into Texas is going to be one of these divisive issues that's going to lead us into the American Civil War. Now, as we begin talking about American settlement in the Southwest, let's go back a little bit. While the Spanish were colonizing the Western Hemisphere, remember that it began with the West Indies, the conquest of Mexico from the Aztecs dates back to Cortez in the mid-1600s. And once the Aztecs were conquered, Mexico became a colony of Spain. The northern part of Mexico was sparsely populated. It's a very dry region. In fact, there were only a few thousand European settlers living there in what is present-day Texas. Many of the settlers lived around Jesuit missions. A mission was a missionary compound where Jesuit priests would live in safety behind walls while they would minister or preach to the neighboring villages. So these missions were often located uh, close to Native American communities so that the Jesuits could go and teach their religion to these Native American communities and then go and sleep behind these walls. And so these missions proved excellent forts and foundations of small settlements. Now, let's jump forward again. Uh, that was mid-1600s when Mexico was a colony of Spain. When Mexico declared its independence from Spain, not long after American independence was declared. Uh, Mexico encouraged trade between the United States and their northern provinces, what is today the state of Texas. They wanted Americans to travel down on the Santa Fe trade route. They wanted Americans to even come and live in these northern provinces for several reasons. Number one, this land was sparsely populated. Texas is a dry region with not many people living in it at this time. And so they wanted it to be settled. But also Native American groups would sometimes attack caravans traveling between Mexico and the United States. And so they wanted people living there to provide safe passage for business people. Now, to protect Mexico's territory, they encouraged American farmers to go to Texas. The Mexican government would offer land grants to agents 
they use the word impresario. These agents would take the land granted to them. It would be their responsibility to sell this land cheaply to American settlers. There was a condition to this arrangement. Mexico was inviting American settlers to come live in Texas for almost nothing. They could largely live their lives in freedom, yet they were expected to become Mexican citizens. So Anglo settlers could go live in Texas. In fact, they were. They were coming by the thousands, and they were expected to become Mexican citizens. That meant they were to obey Mexican laws. And we're going to come back to that in just a moment. Now, one of the most successful impresarios, or agents, was a man named Stephen Austin. He established a colony in Texas. This would be an American, well, Anglo colony of white people living in a Mexican province. Essentially, it would be a town in Mexico. And Stephen Austin would be the mayor of this town. He set up very strict rules. There was to be no drunkenness, no swearing, no gambling, and generally there was a law against mischief. <laughs> so he was very strict. He ran a very tight ship, but he was very successful. And many people came to his colony to live. Now the United States government desired more territory. In fact, the United States wanted lands to the south of the Rio Grande, which is currently the border of Texas to the south. The United States offered to sell, or excuse me, to buy the territory of Texas from Mexico. And Mexico said, no, we don't want to sell you this land. Now we're going to see what happens when somebody tells the American government, no, you can't have our land. We saw what happened when the Miami Confederacy said no. We saw what happened when Tecumseh and the Shawnee said no. We saw what happened when the Cherokee said no. We saw what happened when the Blackhawks said no. If the United States is denied the right to expand and take, then we will steal and kill. At least that's what history has shown. Meanwhile, one of the biggest problems here is that these Anglos, when I'm using the word Anglo, it means Anglo-Saxon, when these white people were coming into Texas, there were some cultural differences. For one, Anglos speak English, not Spanish. And that's a cultural difference. That can work itself out in a few generations. Eventually, Anglos do learn Spanish, and you know, Spanish people and um, Americans living in Texas learn to coexist. Many Texans also speak bits of Spanish just because of the proximity they live near Hispanic Americans. But perhaps the, the biggest difference, and really where Anglos ran into problems with the Mexican government, was slavery. Mexico abolished slavery when they created their country. <clears throat> Yet Southerners were bringing slaves into Texas. Many of these colonies, like the one that Stephen Austin founded, were allowing slavery within their colonies. Many of these impresarios, while arresting drunkards and punishing people for swearing, were tolerating slavery. Now by the 1830s there were more Anglos than Tijanos living in Texas. So there were more ethnic whites than ethnic Spanish or mixed Spanish and Native American what we call mestizos. So more Anglos than Tijanos. Texas, excuse me, Mexico and okay. So Tejanos were outnumbered 
by Anglos. So I love the irony here. Mexico has an immigration problem. Them white people coming over that line. And they don't want to follow Mexico's laws and they don't want to learn Spanish. And now the Mexican government is very upset. Again, the language barrier is something that naturally works itself out with immigration within a couple of generations. But the issue of slavery is yet again going to cause trouble. Now, the president of Mexico, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, put Stephen Austin in prison because he refused to enforce Mexico's abolition of slavery within his colony. And so they threw the impresario in prison. So Santa Ana revoked the local powers of these land agents, attempted to rule these colonies directly, and this led to rebellions and what would eventually become the Texas Revolution. And so Santa Ana marched into Texas to restore order. So we call this the Texas Revolution. And we think of the Alamo as a heroic fight to the death. But I want to tell the same story with different words. In 1828, John C. Calhoun in South Carolina threatened to nullify the tariff of 1828. Andrew Jackson threatened to hang John C. Calhoun and threatened to invade South Carolina if they refused to obey federal law. In 1796, Pennsylvania farmers refused to pay their taxes and began to tar and feather tax collectors. George Washington rallied an army of 10,000 militiamen and put down that rebellion. We call those stories of heroism. Now I want to tell the story using different words. Stephen Austin refused to enforce a federal law. He attempted to nullify Mexico's abolition of slavery within his colony. Santa Ana put him in prison and used force, what Jackson had threatened to do, used force to go into these Texas colonies to restore order. Stephen Austin declared a general uprising, and this became known as the Texas Revolution. The first battle of this war was the Alamo. Santa Ana, with 6,000 Mexican soldiers, stormed the Alamo, one of these old missions, where Texas revolutionaries had holed up. There were only 187 Texan defenders and they died defending the Alamo. And so remember the Alamo became a rallying cry in this battle. So you just witnessed the old Davy Crockett movie made by Walt Disney back in the 1950s. Every young boy in the 1950s wanted a coonskin cap and uh, a rifle or a BB gun if they were too young because they wanted to be just like Davy Crockett. Congressman from Tennessee, yep, from my old neck of the woods. Now, Davy Crockett was a very good self-promoter. He had a great publicist. Half of the stories about him were entirely made up by his novelist and his agent. But whatever. Again, made for a good Disney movie. Now, to your left is the Bowie knife. True story invented by Jim Bowie, who died in the Alamo. Not sure if it was quite like that, but whatever. And these were the subjects of comic books and movies and popular art even of that time. And the story of the Alamo and the story of the Texas Revolution was spun as an act of heroism. But again, I'd like to tell you the story from a different angle. In 2004... Iraq erupted in an insurrection. My roommate was stationed there at the time in the Marines. He was uh, conducting patrols, search and destroys, uh, interrogating suspects of this insurrection. And uh, it was his job to keep the peace in what really was at that time an American colony that was in arms against the United States. 
The media spun that as an insurrection against a lawful government. And the people were branded as bad guys. While my roommate, again, feared for his own life and was shot at and was forced to do things that I'm sure he still has nightmares about. Yet, let's tell the story with different words from a different side. Texas erupts in insurrection. And Jed Clampett plays the leader of the band. And Davy Crockett is a great hero of this war. Even though we really don't know exactly what happened to him. But he was king of the wild frontier. Again, it's how you look at an event that details how you judge that event. That's why we do document analyzers. That's why we do essays. Because it is important that you look at two sides of an issue before you make any kind of decision. So again, that's why we do it. That breached the north wall. Let's swing the cabin. Come on. Okay, a little about Sam Houston. He was one of the leaders in this revolution. He was born in 1793, grew up in Tennessee. Everybody famous seems to be from Tennessee for some reason. Well, anyway, uh, he ran away from home, spent a good chunk of his life living among the Cherokee, adopted their way of life, including much of their tactics that we'll see in just a moment. Um, Sam Houston, as the leader of this rebellion, eventually defeated Santa Ana's army at the Battle of San Jacinto. Well, at the Battle of San Jacinto, um, the Texas revolutionaries defeated Santa Ana's army. Um, if you're into military tactics, it was an interesting game of hit and run and guerrilla maneuvers. Uh, ambushes, surprise attacks, etc. A series of battles, but it did conclude with San Jacinto. Now, eventually, Mexico decided that fighting these revolutionaries in Texas wasn't worth it, much like the American Revolution, and so they granted Texans their independence in April of 1836. And so Sam Houston became the president of the new independent Republic of Texas. And so for about two years, Texas was a country, all its own, its own thing. 
for two years. And that's why it's called the Lone Star State, because it was a country before it was a state. And it's a really big state as, as well. Now, Texas invited America to annex, meaning to incorporate Texas into the Union. And so we eventually would, um, though there was debate about should Texas be allowed to own slaves. But now, let's be honest. Texas wasn't about to become an American state if it meant they had to outlaw slavery. Because slavery was what brought Texas into the revolution after all. And so Texas became a slave state and would fight in the rebellion that we now call the American Civil War much later. With removal now and